you know, I understand you. you got to do what you got to do. Bug cat. Hello, bug cat. Well, I hope I hope you get everything you can get out of this. I hope you'll enjoy every every second, every minute that you're gonna be here in the stream and then enjoy the rest of your day. <sighs> okay. I think the best way to start is approximately on time. Besides, I'll be talking about a bunch of stuff anyway, so there'll be plenty of time for people to come in and catch up, so... It is the game, Battle Porridge. It is the game. Alright, let's get started. So, welcome to an analysis of one of the most famous games in the history of Go, it's you know it's up there with another, I think probably twenty or so games. Um, but this game was played in 1684 between uh, Honinbo Dosaku, who was the Meijin at the time, at the time when that meant he had an honorary title of Tendan professional essentially, and uh, every other pro out there could be Seven Dan pro at the at the max. And Yasui Shunchi, who is Seven Dan pro at the time, so a top pro of the time. The, this is a very, very interesting game, uh, largely because of the way uh, of the evolution of the game, the way it was played, and how the, the score works its way down from black being 20 points up all the way down to black. And I will spoil the ending, but see how we get there. That is really the interesting part here. Uh, black wins this game by exactly one point, and so white makes up 19 points. Of, of deficit through the course of the game and does so very very consistently very very patiently and this is the part that's I think most interesting for me does it largely by following the AI line of thought like the AI plan for handling this board is almost exactly what Dosaku does so that is one of the things that makes this game worth exploring because when we say that you know we are better than we were 300 years ago sort of but maybe not and we will take a look at the way this game evolves and some of the questions that some of the the way Dosaku sets up the board so that he's able to manage the board the way he does if you have any questions any thoughts any analysis any doubts about the board position by all means ask them um, I'll be happy to answer to the limit of my ability and um, hopefully you will you will walk away from this stream having gotten something, even it, whether it's a question or something new. So, I'm gonna note as we walk through the game some of the quote-unquote mistakes that were played by each player, and when we talk about mistakes, I'm really gonna talk about something that the AI says adjusts the end result, the end score, by one point or more. Because there's a bunch of moves that adjust the score by half a point, less than a point, and so forth. And those are very, very subtle things that start to get into how the AI calculates the score, which aren't things I'm interested in going into for this particular review. So, white opens with a 3-4 point, which is very standard for the time. And black responds quickly and approaches. We would normally want to go in this corner in the modern era. However, one thing to note is that giving white even the opportunity of doing this at any point might just be too good for white because this is a very stable position. And at this point, white having been, like Dosaku having been on the, on the stage, had been a professional player for 20 years, People knew that he was a very, very strong fighter, so giving him 
something easy to deal with is not something they were gonna do easily. And this was a pattern that the Yasui school liked doing anyway, approaching quickly. So White responds by approaching. And here, of course, it's so early in the game again. The AI might suggest going into this corner, but when you look at overall what the AI suggests this early in the game for a two-stone handicap, it doesn't know, right? What White is doing here already is beginning to say that this board position in the top left is going to be split a bit, and this board position in the top right is going to be split a little bit, right? So Black is going to have to deal with the position and see where we can go with it, because it's just developing to save this would be too slow. Pincering here would bring these two stones in better relationship, but would allow this stone to get out, or even worse, would let white play somewhere else to split the position further. So black opts for a very normal response to this move at the time, which is this. And this is not something we see anymore, but at the time it was very standard response in, um, to a knight's move approach on a, in a handicap game. And this is also something that we see a lot if you look at Chinese games of the same period, because the game was brought to China, to Japan from China probably about two or three hundred years before, before this game was played. So some of the ideas about the opening are, I think, still evolving from there. And one of the things that we see here is this particular choice is rapid development towards this side, leaving the option for a lot of Aji and invasion points on the inside. So we are not favoring making points in the corner, which is absolutely not a mistake. It is one of the ways you work with the stone, but it is not the way we think about this today at the moment. One of the, another thing that this does is it's going to lessen the value of developing the right side. So white playing in the corner now is less is a little bit less interesting to grow in this direction and if white approaches here there's an option for black to approach and develop this stone so white's response is not help white black develop but instead to split the position further is this the game i have type this this is the game i hyped up cq This is, in fact, this is the game I am very hyped about. Uh, if you were looking at, at Telegraph on Lovex on stream and commenting on how hyped he was at the, the pro game he was reviewing, well, the final of the pro quals in Europe, I'm about this height, maybe more. So here, we're again seeing White choosing to create a very positionally heavy game. Because if White if White gets to follow up here or here, White gets to grow this area or this area with a lot of pressure here and get a lot of profit over here. So Black needs to balance this against a move on somewhere on the rest of the board. If white gets to go here or here, white gets to develop further and again split black. So already there's a lot of questions about how black could handle this. And black chooses to not come back to this yet because when you look at the relative sizes, the values of the moves playing in the corner gives you a bad that's in development and works with the two stones. So black is agreeing with the development. Dun, dun. I mean, it's if it were Beethoven, it would be dun, 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 dun. But it might as well be dun, 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 because it's me we're talking about. So white will not let black get this position and instead will prevent the shimari which makes sense giving black the shimari would be much too good as far as the positional development 
Now, when you look at the current board position, this is the stone you want to develop. And so while this is a normal response, and you see this in all the games of the time, you know, 3-4, Kakari, two space extension. Here it works particularly well because it helps develop this stone. It's very far, right? It is not a normal development the way you would see today. It is not even this far away or even what we might see from sort of modern pre-AI Fuseki. It is this development. So it really favors, it puts some pressure on this stone. It really will favor if this stone moves developing on this side. And that's important to note because it means that white has, again, choices to make. You're supposed to be sleeping. Ow, you don't need to sleep. This is more important, obviously. So white now is going to begin to pressure and ask questions about how to develop. Now white could just come out, but that would be very nice for black because black could extend over here and could extend over here, could even grow towards the fourth line and towards the center, which would help the sides without white having a good response, right? This is a flexible smooth, but it doesn't have a good follow-up. Right now, black has the good follow-ups because this is, right, it's a two-stone game, two-stone handicap. So white is going to work his way around these stones and find a way to approach them to develop the board in a way that's useful. So he's going to ask black a first question. And the question here is, what, what corner do you want to develop? Black could, Black could respond here, which would be pretty normal, even though of course we have this stone, so the three space extension is kind of taken. Black could go here and say, you get to play here, I will develop my strength over here. And that's really basically the two answers, if you look at the ideas as far as board development, right? This would be preventing white from having an easy development in this area. And this would be beginning to strengthening, beginning to strengthen the black band of um, at framework here. Now the the basic ideas, if you want to take a look at them, right, are actually really they're fun to look at because you see how really the choice expands. From here, white black would take this. This is not the the, the game continuation. I want to make that clear because obviously you can't tell if I'm going through a variation, right? But you would have something like this would be uh, an expected follow-up. And you can see white got a development here, black got a bunch of strength here. This corner is still a little bit on the unsettled side because it's so open. But this would be one idea to walk through, right? The other idea, if black extends up here, is one where you might see white developing this way and then black might still want to come back here anyway white gets to grow here black would still end up covering because that still would make more sense and these are um and so the the end result here is while white has built up a lot of strength here this strength is very very loose so if black were we're really preparing to fight heavily, this might be something that, that Black favors because of all the weak points you can leverage here. So these two stones, while sacrificed, are essentially sacrificed, are very heavy with Aji. So Black, having sort of having looked at this, decides to not really choose that yet and instead goes for development here. Right, because this is about the same, and either way you're gonna get this kind of result where you might get some strength here, and it's okay if white gets some strength here. So, black moves a little bit off and sidesteps the question, saying maybe I don't have to do this just yet. And because black did not do this, and this ends up, this will end up being a very important theme that I think we are rediscovering the value of um, in, in post-AI Go, 
is the value and the importance of Sente for board development reasons, right? Because this move, this move is a lot of things, but it is not Sente. Sente is not one of the things that this move is. So now that Black has chosen a development from the other handicap stone, White is going to step in or to the other stone and start to work with the value that it gives Black. So, Black is going to block normally. And here, according to the AI, this move here is a two-point mistake. I think, and I'm not entirely certain why, because it's subtle, but my, under, my explanation for this, if you will have it, is that if Black played here, which is the move the AI would prefer, it's a lot harder for white to use this corner later as a potential trade. Because this corner will be big enough that it will be harder for white to give it up. But pressuring it this way, keeping it very small, limits the actual points that white will get from living, and will also limit the points that black will get from capturing. So we end up with this relatively standard position. Now the, the white group, as is, can live, right? White can just add one more move, it's alive, life is good. And if it lives, um, actually, sorry, white doesn't really have to add one more move. Black can play a move and then white can live, right? Uh, and that, that would give white about, about four points to live. Uh, if black spends the moves to kill it, black will get about 20 points. So, you know, 20 plus four, divide that by two, and you're gonna get, which is the number of moves that you get to play it, and get about 12 points, right? So you get about the 12 points swing. 12 points one way, 12 points the other. Uh, but the thing is, in order to kill it, in order to kill this corner, black would have to play two moves. So, white would get two moves somewhere else on the board. The value of the two moves that white gets will tell you whether killing this corner was worth it or not for black, right? So, pay attention to that because foreshadowing and or spoiler alert, that comes into play. White, if black, because um, black can play here, you defend, black plays here, you defend, and you get two, four, you might get five points. Um, and if black begins by cutting in, I think you're gonna have some fewer points. If the corner dies, it wasn't worth it, easy. Well, but yet, either way, make it six points, the, the reasoning still stands, even if the numbers are a little bit off, right? So, now, white continues here and leaves this corner alone for now, because not worth adding another move, and continues to create a, a game where positional judgment is going to be very important and where the various sizes of the groups will mean that where you attack and where you press will significantly impact how the board develops. Right? Now, here, black has one move, right? Because one thing this move does is directly put pressure on this stone. So black has to come out, which puts pressure on this stone and puts pressure on this stone, right? So now this is the optimal use for, the optimal time for this stone to come out and to get used. Now the, the AI here has a move that um, I just would not have seen, just would not have seen at all. And it's really fun. It's not a thing that you would ever have seen in a Doseku game, so like it's not gonna come up here. <laughs> Tengen, no, not Tengen, but in essence, very close. Here, and this is, when you look at it, uh, other than the fact that it's you know on the sixth line and it's the five, six, point um this is 
the shape move for the the big bulge or the boomerang shape, right? Knight's move, knight's move. And this does impact a lot of the sequences that you can play or in this corner. And it works really well with a check here or approaches here because this turns out to be an important move that's that makes cutting and makes cutting a lot stronger and ladders a lot work a lot better for white in this area. So there's a re there's reasons for development, but that's also you would see this in the Wang Longshire game much more readily than you would in the Dosaku game. Um, and this peak is almost always blue with some enclosure. Yes, the, the AI absolutely recommended this and really, really wanted this to be played. Um, but if you're curious about some, some follow-ups from the AI perspective to see how that grows, Black would come back to this. So this move is the move that, white, that the AI wants, but it is creating AG for later. It is not scenting, right? Like white does have to go back after that and play here. And then black gets to develop this. White might get this move. Then the AI is a big fan. The AI, I'm gonna stop talking about this move for the most part in this game because the AI really, really, really wants to spend the AG here now. It really wants to do so. Um, and then you end up with white coming down here and black descending here. Right, so this is kind of the idea of the variation starting from here. So it's really going to set up for future fighting, right, and, and center strength. But this is a difficult position to manage for white, I think. So another way we can look at this board position for, for white would be to just take the take the Aji here again. St still a good move and still grows, right? Now that we have this, we're really going to begin to ask questions about the development here. And it is still bigger for black to limit the development on this side. White would still get to develop here. And then black, oop, these two moves aren't here, my apologies. Black would get to, to develop this and then because the AI is looking at this, it really wants to come back here. Uh, and then you start to get a, some different development of, of AG here, where the fights, where the, uh, this move is setting up for some center fighting, right? So, all of these moves are, are possible, but you see that there's a commonality here where black would get to play this and white would have to play this, right? In, in the position either way. So a lot of these we can consider to be the way the AI wants to set up the board and not necessarily the best move on the board. That's important to notice because it's one of the things that's hardest to evaluate with the AI really is, um, why is the stone down on the board now? So white chooses to just extend, right? As you, as you see, this move comes back all the time anyway. So white just does this instead of trying to mess with further, um, instead of playing a gote move somewhere, like a big gote, white just plays this. Now black has a bunch of choices um, and all of these offer potentially significant trades and they all center around the key points that we're going to see come up in the game at various times. Black could play, I forget to remove this move all the time. Black could play here. That really, that's one of the options, right? This move makes it a little bit harder for white to use the top. Contrast this with white jumping, for instance, right? This would be a very different board position. Black could come here, which again, just contrast with this move and see how that changes the top. You have a slightly more aggressive result here, which we would see much more more modern play, right? And we see it sometimes in Dosaku, uh, Dosaku games too, so I say modern, but Dosaku used to play this move. And uh, in one of Michael Redmond's Dosaku game reviews, he actually talks about this and the way 
Yosaku handles the position very lightly this way. Uh, and then of course you've got this option here that we saw already twice, and then you, or you could press over here. This would be the very direct moves that the AI likes. As you can tell, a lot of growing, very quick, very aggressive development. So, let's see if there's something particularly meaningful. So most of these moves um, are all dancing around the same idea. And that's one of the things that's important is that while we are looking at these moves as possible continuations, really they're not super different from each other. Like all of them are going to develop or limit the area here a little bit. And then there's going to be a question about how white gets to use this. Generally, white is going to want to try and come out if white doesn't get an extra benefit. So, in the case where black plays here, the, the variation that we see is going to be white come here and then black would take this instead of peeping right through, because this would still be bigger overall, this move is just Aji, and then white would start to develop this way and then black would come back. And, and limit this. So this becomes very subtle positional judgment, right, to evaluate the, the sizes of the moves. Um, make sure I remove all the stones from the board this time. This to meh, this stones, this stone, right? And yeah, so there's really, honestly, with all these moves, they're all dancing around the same ideas. Like the board is going to develop around the same uh, the same weaknesses. Descend here, extend here, cover here, right? Approach here possibly or around this area. And so these are all the weaknesses that we're going to see that uh, the players are also aware of, of course. And, that, and we're going to see in which order they choose to approach them. So black chooses to cover here. The reasoning here being that these stones here need to start being more than just a wall and as we saw if white just jumps here it's going to be much harder for these stones to be useful overall and this area will start to grow in thickness so white has a bunch of options and you know white could just come out here like come out now or white could just could cover here right this would be sort of the mei response saying you developed over here i'm going to develop over here if we want to take a look at this position right which would make sense because this is an area that black is beginning to grow and this is really the only entry point that white has to reduce it so if we look at this position a little bit you would see Black grows a little bit on this side, white jumps, then you'd have this clamp. Now, um, white could just kind of here, black descends, white comes up. And just descend right back. And so, as you have a you have a bit of a trade here, um, where black gets a large corner, these stones here are a split, right? And that what that means is they effectively well, they made the black stones less effective because now black had to create a second wall to start facing this area, and this is very very far away. So there's a lot of room for for shenanigans. Like white has a lot of room to play here. And so these two stones being a sacrifice are not necessarily a bad idea. We, um, we got something here, a fairly active stone, which imagine, just imagine just this stone here. See how this is so much more useful now, right? Instead of being pressed in a third line, these are the beginning of a vanguard of, of white strength. And I bring this up because you're going to see um, a similar idea show up 
in the game and you'll see how Dozaku handled this idea. But for now, Dosaku is just going to cover. Cover, cover. All right, so it's a Mii response as far as the value of the top. Now here, again, black has some options. Still, this would be a very normal first move. Now, by the way, um, I forgot to mention, but if you if you haven't seen this, because this is something that's kind of fallen out of favor a bit, this stone is not dead yet. Especially not with this stone. There's a lot of Aji around here that you could play. But even without this stone, you could play here and you could still make a small living group here. So this is not making a huge corner. Black would need one more move to really kill this stone. So the cost of this additional move is very high because it doesn't do anything but kill this stone. And honestly, at this point, um, going over here, the AI suggested it's a way of sort of eating up a lot of the Aji, so not, no new ideas come up that you haven't seen yet, that I haven't shown. The, other, the one new idea that, um, that comes up is going to be around more Aji usage. And this is just, I'm showing it because this is, this is a variation that you don't really see in the game. It doesn't exactly come up, but it is valuable to consider it. Where black would have this option to move the RG up. And this is not very a very strong stone, but it does make it harder again for white to do something useful up here. So it's a very valuable, very, very light stone. Right? That's So you have this option here. And then you have the option um, that you, from the perspective of the AI, you still want to play these moves. You want to still put this, this down. And you start to see a little bit of, you know, as we grow into the board position, you start to see how it wants this stone to be used. And after this, you would have uh, for the, you would have this area here, growing here and descending here, which again is sort of the inverse Aji of this stone, right? Making it a little bit harder, a little bit more effort to use this, these stones as a wall. And this is one of the very subtle things about the way the AI plays and a little bit, and the differences between the way the AI will be comfortable handling the board and the way a human will be comfortable handling the board. So having seen all of this, let's let's take a look at how um, how Dosaku and Shunchi handle this. Because there's a lot to be learned there too. Now, having seen this move and considering that these were fairly Mii, Black is gonna develop this way. And this move is a two-point mistake. It's not the end of the world but the other option of like starting to burn some of these Aji were better ideas but it's hard if you don't have a great plan in mind for how to follow them up this move makes sense in the sense that you don't really want to give white the opportunity to grow this way that would be really good or even you know a step further so this makes this makes sense this stone uh, oops sorry this stone activates a lot of the Aji in this corner. There's a lot of things you can do now, and so that's not desirable. Because black would like to begin to use this, this to build some strength. But again, building the strength from this area would have been better. So black develops here, and as I said, one more two-point mistake. And now we're gonna see that Dosaku has a plan in mind. And this plan for the next, I don't know, 30, 40 moves is the same plan as the AI. Like the, there's one way to handle this board position as far as both Dosaku and the AI are concerned. And so let's spend a minute to take a look at this and see what we can find, see what we can understand. With the addition of this stone, 
this is suddenly a much stronger area, right? It's still got a bunch of Aji. It's not, it's not closed off. Especially here, there's a lot of, a lot of lines, right? A lot of space to play with. But if Black gets one more move, this, this, then what Black will get on the center or inside, whatever White chooses, will just be too good. Right? So White has to, to put together a plan to make this as useless as possible. And there's a couple of ways, and we're gonna see some ways where like Dosaku's implementation differs a little bit from the AIs, but it all comes down to the same plan execution. So, Dosaku chooses the more aggressive and thinner attachment here. We could play with the... Um, we could just play this, and that would work, and it would lead to a result kind of similar to what we saw before. So we could, you know, white would respond here, um, white would jump, black clamps, white goes here, this time black pulls back. Right, and so you can see here that we have the same idea where we're building strength here this way. And black needs to pay a little bit of attention to this corner because it's not exactly alive yet. And that means white, because this would be a very big corner to give white, so it's hard to give it, right? But giving white the first move here is not fun. So that is, that would be a possible choice, like an AI line for the game. But from a human perspective and from Dosaku's perspective, Dosaku wants to give, wants to keep Sente as much as possible. Right, so he is gonna choose this move, which Black doesn't really have a choice but to respond to. And one of the questions I had here was why, what happens if Black plays here? And the result is, it becomes a very complicated position that Shunshi did not want to get into because it was, it's really unclear what happens after this. Um, like, you end up in a position where you're kind of giving White a very big corner. And I, I'll, just, I'll just walk through this. Um, so if Black chooses to try and resist, then White gets to clamp. Which is asking Black a first question, right? Do we get to Atari a stone? Do we get to Atari from above or underneath? And so Black is gonna play here, because protecting the direction where there's most moves, most potential. Wait, I removed one too many stones. No one told me. This stone is here. This stone has been here forever. So this clamp here, right, is is replied to this way. And then White gets to play this move, this cap over these two stones. Black still needs to worry about this because developing over here would otherwise still be much too good for white, just too much strength in the center, and it would be too easy for any invasion or reduction here to find its way back out to the stones. And that lets white play here. So black can play a forcing move here, and we end up with a cut and an extension. And so this is not, exact, not exactly a done deal, but the black position here is too weak compared to the strength and the size of the corner that white has gotten. So while this is workable, and it is black's turn, right? Black has sent it here. It is very uncertain and since Black is playing with a handicap, Black generally wants to just keep the game simple and safe. So this doesn't make a lot of sense from the human perspective. So when, when Dosaku attaches, Black is just going to block here. 
And this is very nice for Yosaku because he gets to hunt it back. And so now there's questions. And again, we're, what we're dealing with here is what happens as far as white's development, right? Like, because if, if black gets to play this, white gets to come out again, and we're still dealing with the IG of these stones, which are still very low, but they're working surprisingly well with these stones on the side. Right? Black ends up forced to do this. White can approach underneath. Black can try to get out. And as you, as you can tell, we're beginning to, to grow in the center in a way that Black is not entirely comfortable with because it's hard to manage the group on the inside. Right? The corner group went from being heavy from being sort of a light and life group to being a liability that had to be managed. Right? And from this, from this point on, even if black gets this move next, white still gets to, to plop right in and begin a reduction of this area. And this a reduction of this area is where white is going, right? So let's pay attention to that and see again how that works. Now, this would be the normal move for black, right? This result would still be better for black than what happened in the game by a few points. So let's see. Oops, I removed one too many stones. This doesn't happen when you're using an SGF editor to stream. The moves. The the stones can't just disappear, but the real board is just so much nicer. Yes. So, Black decides to be a little more aggressive and wants to take the opportunity, wants to grow a little further up, right? And just kind of be more, be more active and make it a little bit harder for White to, to connect if possible. But this move turns out to be another two point mistake. Because in avoiding the safe move here, Black is making the inside group stronger. And Black has to go back and connect anyway. Goat Kibitz will give you a free stone sometimes. As in like it will add a stone to your captures? You should, I'm not sure what you mean, but whatever it is that you mean, you should send a tweet to Nate and, and tell him that. It sounds like a, a bug he should fix. Now, the the line that the AI recommend is, the, is one that Dozaku will go in, but will go in a little bit later. Oh. Yep, that sounds uh, that sounds like a defect. You should. Uh... Well, yeah, but 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 Nate put this. Nate wrote the site, so might as well fix it. So the the AI suggests cutting here right away, and I'm not gonna go into what this looks like because there's a couple of variations, but they also have turned out to the main line, which is what happens in the game essentially. So you'll see it. That, but Buck, yeah, that doesn't mean it shouldn't be fixed. So once we have this position, White gets to take this one, which you've seen me put down once or twice, right? And so again, White is developing strength and these stones on the inside are getting weaker. So Black aims to keep the corner and limit the strength of the stones, if that makes sense. And then white comes back and cuts, right? And so again, you see how the timing was a tiny bit different, but we're still going through what the AI suggests. And here is why the AI suggests it, because this is the move that black should play. This is the move that white needs to play. And black plays 
this move. And now is the time. Now is the time to pee. So now we have a really good reason to have a stone very deep, right? Surprisingly deep in the black area. So black should connect, but black first takes a forcing move. And this forcing move has the slight, is a slight mistake. It's not a very big mistake, it's a slight mistake. Because it of course makes white stronger in this area still. The evaluation is that um, because this stone, oops, uh, because this stone works with these, it's it's an acceptable result. It makes it makes this wall a little stronger. It makes this makes it harder for this stone to get out. What are you uh, humming about, CQ? Yeah, no, it, it feels absolutely natural to force. It's not a, a huge mistake or anything. It's, I think it might be one point. It's not, uh, you know, for, for most of us mortals, this peep is surprising. Really? Why is that peep surprising? Tell me more. Like there's, there's a bunch of options for, for white from here, but this is among the top five and is, is a thing that based on many mainline variations that I sort of didn't play through, whether it was from instead of this, cutting directly or playing through a bunch of the Aji, you end up in this position and you get this peep anyway. Ah, well, then CQ, you are about to learn something really important about how to use this peep. Because this is, this is the AI mainline variation and it is the Dosaku mainline variation. So black connects, right? Now, um, this stone is a 4-4 stone. I don't know what happened. This is... I need you all to help me when I des destroy the board position. Come on. So this is a 4-4 stone. But, so at this point in time, the more modern version of what happens in the game, again, this, this is variation, this is modern play, it would be to attach right here. Right? And that makes sense. You would ask here or here, Black would probably want to block on this side, right? But Dosaku does this by approaching here. So asking, what can we trade? Do I get something? So Black blocks, which makes perfect sense. And White, white comes up. Now, the move here, this is a direction, um, so Shunshi here makes a directional mistake. And he jumps here. And that makes sense to make it harder for white to get a base and to put as much pressure as possible on the stones, right? But the mistake he makes is being too attached to this area. What the AI recommends playing up here. Saying, look, this area is probably going to be white anyway. Just let white have three points here and instead focus on building the fight for the rest of the board. Right? So this would be... This is what the AI would, would want. Right? Saying, change direction. Go somewhere else. There's a bigger idea for you to have. These stones, you can use these stones, but you have to try to use them. So in instead, we end up in this relatively forced exchange where white has succeeded in making the black stones all pretty heavy and much less effective. Because whatever they're going to take now, the amount of points here has been severely diminished. And now, here's an important lesson, CQ, this is another thing to look at, is when you look at this board position, you know, you can see that there's forcing moves, right? So the important lesson is use the forcing moves in the same direction, right? Build strength consistently. 
which actually goes back to the game you were just playing where, with G3 and C3, right? They're both good, but they're not good together. So, you're gonna play here, and black, of course, will respawn here. So that's reasonable. We get one more forcing move here, and black responds again, which so far we're, you know, we're all within AI, right? So, like, black has lost, where are we? We're move, move 53. So, black has lost about five, six points, I think, of his lead. This, the game is within, the, I think, like, black is up 14 points by AI standards. Calling me out just like that. Well, you you teach me a lot of things, CQ. Besides, I, I didn't say it was you who played the moves. You just outed yourself. But let's let's take a look at this board position some more, because we're not done. We're not done. There is more to the board position. There's more forcing moves to be played. So this position here, there's a very standard way to handle it from the AI perspective. The AI is very happy with things Dosaku is doing right now. Black plays here. White plays here. And then there's a couple of ways around this. Um, there's one way where you could play here, but this just involves White sacrificing this stone and, and getting out. So Black puts pressure here, keeping trying to keep these stones split and making it hard for White to be to be strong. So Black is really pressuring as much as possible. Now the um, the move the AI wants now is this one, and Dozaku plays this move later. He's going to use the Aji now because he might not be able to use it later if black gets sente right so first he's going to poke here and black will turn here so we come here and we and black offers a cup which white is is happy to work with. And this was a slight mistake. Instead of doing this, black should have just connected, but it's not, again, not very big. So now we're going to see what we're going to do with this co, because it's, it's a relatively big co. I mean, it would be very, very nice for white to settle. So it is a more important co for black than this for white, because white has a bunch of room to run but it will be very hard for these stones if if white settles so black takes a forcing move here which is absolutely a valid forcing move a valid coat right here and takes the coat And then white is going to ask if he can take the corner here. And black connects. Which is fair. It's fine. It's, it's the right evaluation. And white plays here. And at this point, the corner is now white. This is a 35-point corner. It is massive. It's a very, very big corner. And here, I've mentioned this once or twice. And I'm going to mention it again. The, one of the big differences between Dosaku and Chunchi is in the ability to manage the timing, right? Because the closer you are to the AI's timing, the closer you are to like excellent, I don't know, I can't say perfect, but very high level positional judgment. And this here, move, move 69, is the first time that the AI recommends attaching here. Which, there's a couple of exchanges here that are relatively standard. Uh, we can walk through uh, what that looks like if you want. Actually, this is a relatively interesting position because it's a way for the AI to create a... to sort of work with these stones. 
So you would have an exchange that looks like this. And this exchange evolves as the game evolves and of course as the rest of the board position changes. So, but in this case, what really matters is getting this result here, right? White gets some strength here, but black has a much stronger position in the corner to work with. Unfortunately, white gets this move and then we're back to this area and white got to play there first. So again, white is running and this area is very heavily reduced. And I think this is one of the things where Chunshi wasn't comfortable with white running like that too easily and he was trying to make up for the corner so so instead black plays here and so we're seeing here now this comes back into play we are now going back to take away this Aji and ask some questions about the life of the group. And this being said, White has pretty much decided to not keep this group. So he's going to use the forcing moves to build a position on the outside. So this makes, this makes sense. And then White turns. And black extends, white extends, and then again, black makes another two-point mistake here by separating. He's trying to maintain this position and, and build a wall and to save his corner, and this makes perfect sense. It's a completely reasonable move, and you know, I say, I say mistake, and then I say it's a two-point mistake, but. I am, I am not at the level where a two-point mistake in my games is something I'm usually very worried about because I make much bigger mistakes. Like, I don't think my thought patterns during my own games is usually not refined enough that I'm that worried about two points. But in this case, Black should extend further and manage the IG from this, this cut and make it harder for these two stones, for this group and this stone to work well together which also makes it a little bit nicer when black eventually comes back around here, right? Now you can see that black's Aji is beginning, beginning to work. So instead, black plays here and white gets to turn. And now these stones are working very, very well together and there's a couple of cutting points here that are going to be a little bit hard for black to manage. So, black gets a second move. Right? So at this point... Um, the corner is... Essentially dead. And, you know, black is up... 14-ish points. So it's not the end of the world. It's doing okay. But the trade here that is offered, because you know, if white plays here, you end up with a position that's a little tricky to manage. So white gets to come back and take this move. And this is a very nice move for this group. Now black kind is keep the groups split, that makes sense, manage the liberties. White has a couple of options. The simplest and best move is probably this one. It just really works with the liberties and sets up just getting out, which is really the most important thing. It's best move in the sense that it's um, just in line with the AI and doesn't change the score and so forth. The, Dosaku plays a one-point mistake instead um, by doing a double honey, but again, he's choosing a sacrifice 
exchange. White could also just descend here, which would be a tiny bit better, but makes it a little bit, I guess a bit more of a severe attack, but not exactly the direction that Dosaku wants to go in. So we get this exchange. White connects. And then black makes another mistake here. Um, black should Atari, um, but he turns here. Telegraph with the raid of 13 people. Hey, Telegraph, how you doing? Goshi Franchi, hello, hello. You are in time for... Well, you're, you're in the middle of the most important section of the game, I think, which is exploring how Dosaku's approach to the reduction of this giant area was exactly in line with the AI's approach to the same reduction. And we're looking at some of the unfortunate mistakes that um, Yasui Shunchi made, where mistake counts as losing two points as far as the AI is concerned. So black turns to keep the game simple, to help settle this area, to just simplify things a little bit. So white gets to play this move, which makes a little bit more strength. And of course, threatens to save these stones. So black connects. And then we have one of the most famous this, I believe, is the most famous move in the game, if you know this game. It's a very Dosaku move. It is a move that, through other variations, the AI is working towards as well. It is this attachment. And this move is very elegant. It does a bunch of things, right? It's gonna work on keeping black pressed down over here. It's gonna And it's gonna work on developing stones on the outside, which is where this group wants to go. Right? It forces a response because it's an attachment, so what are you going to do? You, you have to respond. And it's also building strength from these stones that have been waiting very patiently the entire game. So when Black played this move to prevent these stones from getting an extension, Dosaku just worked very, very slowly right, to build the top and then get an extension that the top could benefit from. A constant glissando saku of stones. Yes. He, um... I mean, his, his style is so close to the AI's style in so many ways. Like, he would just... He... These jokes are getting harder to make. <laughs> Let's choose another player. When I'm done with dosaku, I will move on to Shusaku. I don't know how many of his games I'll cover because he's got 471. And I'm not sure I'm up for being there for four years, although it could be interesting. But you'll have to suffer with shoe based puns, I think. <laughs> you'll never be done with the. I may never be done with Dosaku. That is also very true. So, um, it's, it's tricky for Black to find a good response to this move. I mean, Black could just honey, which would work okay, but it would be pushing white in a direction that white wants to go in. So black extends and tries to keep white from having forcing moves. And the next move is, according to the AI, a three-point mistake and the worst mistake Dosaku makes in the entire game. So we're gonna go, we're gonna show you that move first. Then we'll show some of the other moves that Dosaku could have played that would have been better. Dosaku jumps back. This three-point mistake. Terrible. Everybody cry. Um, and it's it's a mistake because it's easy for Black to just extend up and then make it harder for these stones to to do something useful, right? He, 
black can begin to grow this area. Right? Black can begin to jump over here. But um, I was I was prodding Frozen Soul with questions about this position and it's one of the things is that it's actually really hard right now. Those who sucked really bad. <laughs> Get out! Get out! Um, is that this this influence is really hard to use right now. Like, white has made it very difficult to use this influence. It's bounded here, it's bounded here, it's bounded, like... And so, white is making the game difficult for black to leverage. So, some of the better moves, and these are the old kind of, you'll see ideas, right? But just extending here would have been a better move. Um, and actually, one of the things here is that this would have been a better move, but black gets to play here. And so you get an exchange here first. If you take this Atari, then you get a more normal line where black would have to do this and then you can come back and walk back and this would be much more normal but white loses sente and black gets to play here right so the other another option would be to descend to Hane here right split the stones and that makes sense too Black would get to cut. White extends. Oh, I'm sorry. White doesn't extend. I apologize. I was. I wasn't thinking. White ignores because that doesn't matter so much. It's only really important to remain relatively, relatively connected. And even if you have to sacrifice this, black has put so many stones. But if I were white, I wouldn't want to sacrifice this. But this turn here, if white gets a position here, then fighting on the rest of the board will be incredibly difficult. Right, and then black would get to play here and cut. So these are all options where, uh, where black gets the first move on the right side. And it's not necessarily very good for, for black, because if, for, for white, sorry. Um, white doesn't really want to give the, that hand over to black that easily, especially with this area being uncertain. So, the result instead, while we go for, you know, this three-point mistake, this three-point mistake is threatening to cut, right? And thre it's threatening both of these groups. So, it is a thing that black is much more um, willing to... Well, it looks like a threat, right? Obviously, it's it's not considered a threat. Black should cut anyway. And that's how big that cut really is. And if this is what happens, then white just ignores that cut and just develops on this side. So you see how there's... The idea of reducing here and making all of this fight is, an, is really combined with a the whole board thinking of how to make it so that it's difficult for black to choose a good next move from the existing position. So black gets suckered in, I think is the only way to look at this, because this is also a three point mistake. So. This is one of those things where we're gonna we're gonna ask, did, did Dozaku knew? Did he know that Shunshi would feel inclined to respond and he made a mistake because he knew he'd be okay with it? I hesitate to say this because it doesn't that didn't really happen. This kind of psychological play. Uh, but Shunshi probably just tried to keep the game simple and build enough strength to be able to to counter. Unfortunately, it gives white the chance to take the beats here. 
and grow in this area slightly. Now, the next move is not terrible. It's like a one and a half point mistake or something. White plays here, which is a great check. It's the last big opening point, big Fuseki point on the board. And you can see how it's beginning to grow some, some related strength, right? There's an obvious opening here. And of course there's black strength, but you can see that it's very patiently developing the board. There is something where both players, I think, were, I suspect they were both dealing with trying to figure this area out. Because if you look at the AI, the AI would like a move in one, like one of these four moves, the AI would be a very big fan of. And you can see how that would make it even harder to develop this area. Um, and the exchange here is gets tricky because you, you end up having to change position and um, make a directional adjustment because black basically black would play here and then at this point you let white live you let black live here and so you would grow further in this area and now black has to choose what to do but these stones cannot really get out right so you push this way white doesn't have a need to cut so he just protects some the shape in, uh, of the group in the corner and then black attaches to get as much space as possible and pulls back and white makes more shape and so this would be a continuation suggested over here and you can see so this move again is good but doesn't put enough pressure on black by itself to be something that those like would favor. So we're gonna come back and we're gonna take a look at the way those like we thought about this. This of course doesn't put a ton of pressure on, on black either, but it makes it a little bit harder for black to develop. Just a little bit harder. Right? So Black is gonna come back to this fight and he's, this move has a tiny problem and we're gonna see this problem because that, that's how the game develops, is that when Black extends up, White gets to nose hit. And this turns out to be an acceptable shape for black, for white. It's just good enough. So when black honey, and here this would be the good direction because it's, it would be nice to capture these stones. It really would be, it'd be a lot of points. It'd be a great victory, but you really want to start using these stones. So you want to build a wall here. You want to start leveraging something in the center. All right, so white follows here and then black sh black should just connect for the reason I just mentioned. Black should just accept to build all this strength because this being stronger here makes this comparatively weaker, right? Like if black connects here, white can turn, but then again, black gets to play here first. And at this point, the, the sequence that we're going to see when Black eventually plays here, because he does, is very close to what we're going to see in the game, so I'm going to skip this for now. But Black gets a little bit on the aggressive side here, and is going to do an empty triangle to poke at the shape. Now this is another three-point mistake. Again, you know, just Black should be here. And at this point in the game, at move 100, um, Black is up 9 points. So in 100 moves, Dosaku has made up one of the handicap stones already. Which means his play, of course, is so much more consistent than Shunchi's. Right? He's made one 3-point mistake, and that means he would have been up 
you know, would he, Black would have been up by only six at this point. Well, it's hard to evaluate this because it would have been a different game. Black may not have made this mistake, etc., etc. But you get my gist. So, white gets to play this shape, which protects the cuts, and then black plays this move, which is a, a common, a common exchange, a common trade here, because when you have this stone, it's very easy. If you get to play here, you surround, right? You're done surrounding. Boom. Very simple. Right. Um, yeah. And F. right. And so if if white chooses chooses to block here, then black can just connect here, and then white's shape doesn't have an eye. So this would be this makes sense. Right. So like all of these ideas are, are reasonable from that perspective. Like you know, the idea that white maybe just wants to just go out this way and then you can come back or you can work to keep him split. Um, however, in this particular shape, this is a mistake. This is a two, another two point mistake and black should push. Again, the, the big idea here, the direction is gonna be shove white to the side. It's fine if they connect out build your strength over here because this is the next fight, right? So work for the next fight. And Shunshi is working his way there, but he's working his way there not as effectively as he could. So... White plays here. This is a one-ish, one, two-point mistake. I think white, like white should just extend. But this works fine because the black shape is just weak enough. So black, of course, is going to cut here. And now white gets to block. So now black is forced to come out, come here. But you see how that in this area with this move, white is still pulling ahead and he's still a little bit ahead of white, of black in this area. So it's still just a little bit hard for, for Black to make something useful here. White extends. He needs to continue running still a little bit because this stone has just, just enough Aji. And Black makes a small, small mistake. Again, White sh Black should build in this area. But Black continues running, trying to fight, get his kind of drawn into this fight. And this is not this is not bad, and one of the reasons why is because white is fighting and eating up white's own liberties here, right? So that makes sense. But again, you look at the direction, you look at what we're trying to do, and this stone doesn't matter. So now this group has a much more solid foothold into being able to fight into the center, and these stones are beginning to come into their own. So black plays this move, which will be very important for endgame. So it's got a good, good follow-up. And for the record, if if I'm not saying anything about the value of these moves, assume we're we're in the top three of the AI selections as far as like percentage and, and score. Like that's that's how good this game is, right? We're not really saying any if I don't say it, assume we're AI level. Cool? Cool. Thank you. Finally, black comes back here. And this is not bad, it's it's okay, but white doesn't have to answer this move because the connection is good enough. And so, what do you do from here? Well, it is time to start handling this area of the board. And where is the best entry point for this area of the board? We could maybe take a look at this, which we saw before. And that wouldn't be that wouldn't be bad, right? But the most effective way is one that actively makes it harder for black to use their stones. So white cuts here. Because if black Ataris and white takes, 
then the direction is just a little bit worse, right? And the potential is reduced significantly. So it's hard to, to really reply. Now, Black makes another move here that I have a hard time really dealing with. It's a, it's kind of a mistake. Um, the AI would like Black to just extend here or maybe do a jump. Um, we could also see this move, like the, the Ogema as, as an okay move. But Black plays this move, the Dai Dai Gamma, the very large dice move. And of course, this is a ladder breaker. Cool, fantastic, great, love it. Or whatever it's worth, because it's not there's no real ladder here. But work with me. But what it does is kind of sit at the at the edge between the two Moyos, right? It is really on the two set it is really on the sector line between the two. And so it is, I think, Black's first attempt to really demarcate, pre limit the potential of white and create some potential or begin to realize some potential here. So unsurprisingly, white looks at this move and goes, okay. And so white says, do you want to co? Black says, hell yeah, I do. And White continues to work his way through. And this is this is a typical Dosaku line in the sense that he would play these very, very thin shapes pretty regularly. In this case, it's not that thin because there's two things in Atari, right? But so you can see how he's able to create a lot of white influence with very, very few stones while playing very lightly at the same time. And now, finally, he probably said, hell yeah, brother. <laughs> probably the, the, the Japanese equivalent in the 1600s, yes. Uh, but it's this is, again, if you look at, I forget which one it is, but in one of Michael Redman's, Redman's reviews on, on YouTube, um, he talks about a similar line of th uh, a triple honey, a la Hulk Hogan. <laughs> yeah, rawr. Uh, those who play the triple honey like this early on in the game and develops this kind of center influence that he's uh, that impacts a lot of the fights for the rest of the game. So this is something that he's good at doing, and you can see how this changed the game position completely. Like now, Black has to deal with this. And by the way, if these stones get cut off, it's game over, right? Now Black finally finds this move. This is now the AI move again. So this is the this is a, one of the good timings to play it because enough is settled, but it wasn't the first good time to play it from the AI perspective. And White now has a clear objective. And the clear objective is limit this area so he's going to choose the outside and black comes here here and be careful here when this happens choose your direction carefully as black as white you are going to fight you need more strength and you definitely don't want to lose a corner for being an idiot, so don't do that. And now white gets to play another one of those triple hanes because the shape is is weak, and so there's gonna be some aji. And I forgot to note this, but black makes another three point mistake here and cuts here. And I don't understand this direction. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what black was thinking with this. I don't understand. Like there's obviously cut here. So I don't know what Black was trying to do. I want I would like somebody to help me with this. I think maybe maybe he was trying to create a position where he could save these stones, possibly, through a through a co. Because, you know, if if you go to this position and you do this. 
I mean, it looks like it's alive in code, maybe? No, it's not. So, I guess he was trying to save the stones, possibly. Oh yeah, Bisek, hello! How are you? So glad of you to join. So good of you to join us, because I know you're not usually here on Sundays. Uh, maybe you can answer the question then. I need a. I need a smarter. I need a more experienced player than me to help me answer a question, which maybe there isn't an answer. Maybe it's just just a mistake. But we're at this board position. White just played the second Hane here and black cuts here. And this is a mistake. This is a three-point mistake. And... or two-point mistake, sorry. And like, why? Why cut here? When it, cer it feels like all of white's efforts go towards reducing this area, and it seems so much more important to keep white from developing the strength, why not cut here? Help me understand what was going on in black's head when when they decided this cut. I'm confused. And yes, I'm putting you to work instantly. Q10... Q10 doesn't work? What? Define work? What do you mean, work? The AI thinks it's a better cut. I'm not the only one. Like, I'm assuming connect, and then something like this would be just better for black. Like, I'm... I think this would just be a better fighting position for black to be in. I'll, I'll have to take another look, I suppose, but... Well, let's take a look. Look, it's easy. Let's follow through the board position. So... This is what happens, right? So black cuts, white connects, and says thank you for the outside strength. White has the P10 ladder. Okay. Middle isn't worth much for either player. This game is like within six or seven points by now, so it's not worth much, but it might be worth, it might be worth six extra points. Black is forced to connect. Uh, what? Did I remove this extra stone? I did. This stone was here. I'm sorry about that. I don't know why this one got lost. But um, white gets to turn. Around 15. Uh, okay. Black gets. Another heads up on the end game, which makes sense, right? It's, it's a big move. And white starts this co. So, black plays a co threat, which is fair. White stays connected. Black takes the co. And then white plays. This move. Now this is not the best move in the sense that this would be a little better. The um, technically these these two moves here, this move, and this move are all are both better than this move. But when I say better, we're talking we're within one point, right? Within one point. And the impact is uh, you like J12 the most. This is difference difference in style, I think. Um, because I think, so I think the AI likes this move better by like 0 0.2 points or something like that. But the impact of both of these moves is actually very similar in the sense that they are uh, creating a position where white can develop strength here, black can develop strength here. So it is offering a position, uh, a territorial trade in the center of the board. And white chooses this, which will nudge the, the game in the same direction, right? But seems like it's a little bit easier for black to build strength that way. As evidenced by the fact that white plays there, that black plays there instantly. Uh, black takes, white takes the co, 
And Black looks at the board and says, there's nothing bigger than this group. So I'm going to make sure I don't lose the game. And then... So here, again, White could go down this path of making life more complicated. But the game is within six points. So Black, cho so White chooses this comparatively slightly simpler, simpler variation. This would be technically, a, again, one point if mistake. Because it lets Black connect this way. Oops, that's the wrong color. White gets to play this Atari, and then Black plays this move, and I guess at this point we're connected as Black, so we're relatively content. But we have to play this move, and White gets to play, gets to start this go. So now there are two there are two co on the board. One second T7. Okay, what about T7? What do you got for me? Nothing, nothing. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so now we have this group. And then we have this co over here. This co is not worth as much anymore, but it is still significant as far as the shape here. So we're working off of this co right now. We have a first co threat. Makes perfect sense. White decides it is not really worth losing the corner or doing anything silly in this area, so he just connects. So now, this is a code that is entirely on Black's side to deal with. And Black plays here. Now this is a... This is a two-point two mistake, if I recall correctly. Um, the best move for Black would have been here, which would have been the exact same idea, obviously, but a little more severe, and taking this co was also better. But this obviously is a little bit simpler to look at. And white just blocks. White had some other options, but just goes in this way. And black, get, black gets to turn, so we're working on big reduction. The fight is not completely over, but it's almost over. And so white doesn't let that just go. So at this point we see that we see that black is really trying to do something in the center even though it's going to be a very reduced center. It's not, not going to be a lot of points. We're going to be like we're going to have 5 points in here I think when this is done. And here we have a fun little trade. Where we are going to connect this way. And black leaves this alone because obviously it's going to be a forcing move. Uh, and the two stones are two stones, right? There's kind of bigger things to do right now. Like asking, can we cut? Very big, very big question, can we cut? Can't cut, F11 is there. Well, F11 is this move. But if you are talking, the two black stones are safe. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes, yes. Well, White plays F11. <laughs> so so now the two black stones aren't safe. So black saves them. And then white throws in, making the code just a little bit heavier. And black starts this other code. So 
So white is gonna begin this thing that we're calling squeezing that corner for all the Aji gets worth. And then we're gonna take this coat. And black is just gonna connect and white is just going to connect. And now it is on to figuring out what we're gonna do with this. With this, the black is going to play in the center and try to get a couple of points here. So white will continue playing this code because this is pretty big. And black will say, what about these two stones? Oh, sorry. What about what about cutting this group off? Can I can I cut off these groups? And white says nope, nope. So we take this, and then white is going to begin this reduction. And so as, as black, you have to consider that you really want as many points as possible because I've said this before, I'm going to say it again, this game is within five points right now. Um, and it involves whether this group lives or dies is, is included in those five points, right? But you would like to squeeze this area for as much as you can get out of it. So we're going to try. Then we're gonna take this coat as white because that is a big move. Black will continue trying to make space in the center. And white is going to very, very patiently, very strongly reduce everything possible. Now, black needs to just extend here. There's some unpleasantnesses with the unpleasantness with the liberties here. But he's gonna try to push and try to get this cut. But it turns out that this is just not gonna work if he takes and white just Ataris. It's just not gonna do anything particularly particularly good so black is forced to go back in and connect so white gets to take this atari black gets this one stone and then white connects and this as the result of this area is pretty safe but this area is still up for grabs or rather still up for reductions so when black Han is to block, white will ask how far we're going to go. And white connect, black connects, just making more points. And then white will just keep on asking how far we can go and how many stones we can cut off. So black plays solid. This move here is technically a one point mistake, but then black plays here and then it's nullified. And then we go back to this code because it would be good to be able to live here. That would be nice. So this is a nice little code threat because it would be white, because black has put a lot of effort in this group. So, we continue, and then black takes those two stones. 
which is a pretty good threat um, size wise so now we're gonna we're continuing the threat out to these stones right so black plays here and the astute among us will notice that this entire group of white stones is running out of liberties dosaku also notices Now, um, there's a lot of other... So here, this is the next big mistake by Black. In a sense, it's another three-point mistake. Black plays out here. And just fin and cleanly closes off the Aji here. There's some better moves to be, to be played, and they generally involve playing through the Ko. We can take a quick look at those. These are... This is endgame shenanigans, right? Like it's endgame calculations, and it's really hard to fault Shunchi for not being okay playing, um, playing a ko or two ko's when the game is within six points. Which again, this is after this, the game is within three points, right? So the game is very close from a two stone handicap game. So one of the variations that uh, the AI looks at is connecting strongly here then white gets this move black would get to connect here white would threaten over here and then white would take i'm gonna leave these stones on the board for the sake of simplicity bear with me and then you would take this co again leaving this stone on the board for the sake of simplicity uh, Connecting and then continuing through the end game here. So, this would be keeping the game within six points. Right? So, uh, I am I am glad you appreciate it. Okay, I, I put a, a fair amount of work into it. Now to make sure I've removed every stone from this variation. Okay, I think I got everything. Yeah, that looks right. Okay, this was one of the possible variations. Um, another one involves playing through, through this code a little bit more. And so I'm gonna leave this code on the board because again, I have to, want to remove these things later. Uh, think of it as practicing your visualization. And you'll see here, many of the moves are the same, right? There's a lot of things on this board that are obviously finite. White takes the co here, black takes this co. And so you see here, I think, where the uncertainty comes from, because there's another co that starts, and then black just connects here. Um, black connects, white takes this co, black takes this co, then white gets to uh, to play this move as a threat, which black has to respond to. White takes the co, black takes the co, and then white connects uh, here. So, and this is the se the second variation. I can show you a third vari variation that goes against again through through the co. Um, but. I have a very hard time, at my current skill level, blaming Shunchi for not wanting to play through this. <laughs> or for choosing something other and more certain. Because obviously it's a three, he loses three points from just playing this extension here. But if he evaluates that it makes the game a better win by one point, then it's a lot better than something more complicated that is a win by more points. Right? Because more, more chances for mistakes. Right? So... I think this is where uh, the AI and the, the, the Shusaku moves, like taking a look at Shusaku games, teaches you a lot because you see how to keep the game simple and there's a lot to be learned from that skill. And 
Okay. I think this is the board position. Yeah, this is the board position. Okay. So, uh, still here with this co here. Yeah, cool. And so the... Um, so the third option is almost entirely the same. Honestly, so I'm not, not going to bother doing it again. There's like just some other co-thread-ish things done. But at some point, black plays here and then white takes this is the only real difference. So I don't feel the need to put you through it. So I show the reason I show all this is really to, again, to say this is a three point mistake. Sure. Can you blame? Right. He's already felt for this is move 215, 214 is this one. Um, and it's he's felt his lead dwindle the entire game. Uh, why not S7? For black? So I have... I have just played through that variation that plays with S7. S7 is a better move than this by, 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 by three points. The... Um, the honest answer is, um, Jeez, huge. <laughs> so part of it is there's a co here, there's a co here, there's potentially a co here, and there's just more things that are uncertain to play through. So my guess, my current best guess is that, um, is that black preferred a, a victory that was fewer points over a victory that was more points but less certain? That is my guess. I, I do not know the answer because the player who played black has been dead 300 years. So it'll be hard to get an answer out of him without the Necronomicon. But that's my best answer. And yeah, yeah, good good eye on you for for catching that this is a better move than this. So once once this is on the board, white white goes on and continues to reduce. So he takes the stone. Black closes off this area. White plays this little bit of endgame over here, and then pokes at the endgame shape here, right? Because there's, um, you'll notice there's a weakness, right, in this area with the throw-in, just like liberties. There could be just, just enough liberties to be a problem and make stones die. So that'll be a thing that comes into play a little bit later. Finally, black comes back here and says, okay, the areas that I was worried about, I can manage. And now I can play through this co again. So white plays this co threat, which white threatening to, to throw in, take the stones, make life miserable. And then white takes the co. Black turns here and get this reduction. White connects, and now we're beginning to look at some shenanigans around liberty counts, right? But first, black has more, more things to reduce. And black and white just responds here. And then we take the coat. We have a co threat. Very good co threat. Very hard to not respond to that co threat. And white takes the co. Black takes this co. Saying, can I can I do something else? Can I come out, connect my stones out? White says, oh no, I don't I don't think I like the sound of that. 
Seamus Black got so less chance. Um, the game is within two points now, three points. This move 236, it's still three points. But it is, yeah, it's it's a very close game. The um, as far as the AI is concerned, the win chance is is almost a hundred percent for Black right now. So we get we get this co-threat, right? Throw-ins will suck. So that makes sense. We take the co. You roughly counted though. I mean, I after after just having gone through a bunch of this, this game with the AI for a few hours, I'm relatively comfortable uh, in in my estimation of the board because I mostly remember the AIs. But yeah, at this point, uh, the game is within three points now. All right. So Black takes these stones. White takes back. We are going to get, oops, this sequence. And now White takes these stones. And this for us humans, feel, might feel like a swing, but this was part of the coup and the way it was managed. Black gets to move somewhere else, right? Black, white timed it so that it would be a response over here and there wouldn't be too much that uh, Black can really do, but the game is within three points with this capture. And now we're gonna just play the last few moves of endgame. We have like, well, 30-ish left, but you're gonna see how they handle the rest of this position. We push. Try to make another point. Close here. Take. Extend and connect. Connect. We're gonna take this co. And now black removes this Aji. Takes. Black blocks. White take. White does a throw in here, and black closes that off. White connects. Black makes take the point, threatens to take another one. White defends, black gets the last center reduction in this area of the board. Then he closes this off, threatens to take it. Take some points. White says no. We take a simple move up here. What's this? Push. Of course, block. Ask if we can connect. And take. Gonna block this area. Connect. And white takes this coat. And this is the last move we have in the game record. So at this point, uh, the game ends. Well, sorry, that's not true. I can't say at this point the game ends, but moves after this aren't recorded. There's there's some dummy to be filled out but the game ends up with black plus one. So there you go. I hope you all enjoyed 
uh, this analysis of Dosaku's masterpiece. There are some folks who say that uh, this game was engineered as a one-point loss by Dosaku, and it's possible that he did so. It's possible that he played some moves that were a little bit less aggressive or a little bit less complex than he could have. I don't know if I really believe that when you look at how close to AI level all his moves were, other than like the one three-point mistake he made. So it, I think it is, it's also uh, devaluing the... Thank you for the follow, Chains Joy, by the way. Thank you, I appreciate it. I think it's also devaluing the skill of Yasui Shunshi to say that this was engineered as a one-point loss. He fought extremely well to just get the game to, to a victory from the two-stone handicap, which just you know, goes to show just how strong Dozaku was at the time. So, for me, the really the most enlightening part, for me, the most enlightening part really is that this was a game where Dosaku played almost entirely AI level moves and created a game where he could manage the complexity and work his way up. But he always worked at the top of his form. And he never he he never gave an inch. Like there isn't a mistake that Chun Chi made. There, well, actually there's No, uh, there's never a mistake that Chun Chi made where he let Chun Chi get away with it. There was the one time he made a mistake and Chun Chi made a mistake right back. But that's not the same thing. Um uh, TKE, hello, hello, <laughs> welcome to the end of the stream. All right, um, I'm gonna, happy Halloween, yes. I'm gonna put these stones away. Um, I am gonna find somebody to raid. And yeah, that was, a, that was a good, nice two hour walk through this game, it turns out, huh? So. Uh, Pretty, pretty good evaluation of how long it would take. I am probably going to put this game up on YouTube. Because I want to remember what I thought about this game at some point. Because I'm probably going to come back to this game later on when I get stronger. So yeah. Yeah. I thank you all for hanging out. I hope you... I really hope you got something out of this game and something out of my comments, whether they are, uh, whether you got answers to things that you weren't, were wondering about or questions that you can now ask in your games or questions about my sanity or uh, just, yeah. So, hot take. Give me your hot picks on the analysis. How was that for you? Did you did you enjoy this? What could I have done differently? What could I have done better? So I'm gonna plug my my Discord again. I'm trying to make it a place where people who want to study ancient uh, classical prose or well, actually, yeah, I guess generally classical prose have a place to hang out. I'm gonna try to convince Battle Porridge to uh, start putting some of his like classical game analyses in, in my Discord because well, he's like the one other person I know who is actively doing analysis of ancient games, of classical games. Whew. All right. 
Oh wait, I forgot something very important. I forgot something very important. Well, I think... Uh, well, look at you. You ask and, and Nightbot provides. Um, I, I forgot, I prepared something very important for all of you. Uh, something that we haven't seen in a while. We have... I, I prepared... Uh, I prepared a board flip. I hope all of you are prepared for this. Oh, it's been so long since this appeared on my stream. Um, my rank... so... My rank on OGS is probably outdated. But I am... I am 7Q on OGS currently. I am pretty sure I'm stronger than that. Did I just hide my face cam? I did. I hid, I hid the face cam. So yeah. Alright, let's see. Wow, there's actually almost no one there's <laughs> how do you how do you feel about reading there's a, an italian streamer ghost streamer that i follow you could raid him otherwise i think i might raid someone who does uh Final fantasy 7 speedruns how is there no one streaming go right now it's so confusing I don't know, how do you all feel about someone's going to be streaming in Italian? I feel like, I, I don't know how interested you'll be in into that. I think we might just raid Chris Abyss. So weird. I'm not used to being the only Ghost streamer. I, I don't know what to do with this responsibility. All right, we will. We're gonna raid Chris Abyss. You'll get to see someone who's working on this Final Fantasy VII speedrun. I hope you enjoy it. And yeah, I'll be back Tuesday for more one launcher. So find the raid button. There it is. All right, take care, everyone. Thank you for hanging out.